Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Ruin News. I am your host, Ryan Ryan. Once again, it's bloody good to have you here. Jagex has dropped another bombshell of an update on us. Two updates so far of 2024, and both of them have been absolute bangers. This week, they have changed the PVM meta for the foreseeable future, and we're going to go into great detail on that in just a moment. But I want to know what you guys think of what's going to happen this weekend during the Summer Summit. If you don't know what that is, I'll explain it in a little bit. But if you have any predictions of what Jagex might announce that's coming out this year, Valamore is not included because that's cheating. Do not comment that. But anything else you think, down below in the comment section. Leave it there because I want to steal your ideas for my own little predictions and possible bingo that I'm thinking about making. Like and subscribe while you're down there if you haven't already because this is your number one stop for news in old school RuneScape. My name is Ryan Ryan and you're watching Rune News. In this week's Old School RuneScape update, Jagex brings us the notorious yet long-awaited Scythe and Fang updates. Now this involves the Fang nerf and the Scythe buff, which I honestly thought was coming later in the year when they were going to do a beta on the entire rebalance. But when you think about it, it makes sense that they're doing this early and it's a bit of a shock to me to be honest. I was not expecting this update right now at least. I'm sure a lot of you guys weren't either, but here it is. Let's have a look and... Uh, if you just invested in a fang, don't lose your hair over it because the fang will still perform just as beautifully as it did in 98% of the content you use it in. So don't feel disheartened by this update. It, it's totally fine, okay? So first we'll start off with the Osmonton's fang, uh, which we know is has been a, a great introduction to PVM since the release of Turns of a Masket. Now with Desert Treasure 2, it was pretty much the optimal weapon to use on Vardavis and the Duke. It wasn't necessarily the best in slot on both of them, but it was just the most practical weapon to use. Like the Blade of Saldor would get a better time on Vardavis, but it just wasn't as consistent as the Fang. Same goes for the Duke, unless you hit a big BGS, it wasn't worth using the Scythe. So it makes sense that the Fang was the go-to weapon for the majority of PVMers in Old School RuneScape because it was fast, cheap, and easy, much like the Ex-Wife. Now this update actually removes the double accuracy roll mechanic from the Slash side of the Fang. So it still works perfectly fine everywhere you stab, which is mostly things like Nex and TOA. Totally fine to use there with Slash. It's not as powerful, which means the Blade of Saldor, the Abyssal Tentacle, the Scythe, they're more uh, sought after or more useful weapons now going forward. It's basically bringing you back to before TOA was released, which to be honest, was not a bad state for the game. And with future updates coming this year, it's going to bring those weapons up even further, possibly beyond where the Fang is now. I believe that we worked out the Blade of Saldor will actually be better once the Vardavis, not Vardavis, sorry, Valamor update comes out and that little Sun Offhand Blade thing comes out. That with the Blade of Saddle and even the Tent Whip should be better than what the Fang was pre this nerf here. So a little bit of patience, you'll have better Slash, but the Fang Stab is unchanged as far as I'm aware. It's purely, um, it's purely just the Slash removal. So unless you're doing Vardavis and Duke, this update does not concern your Fang, you don't need to worry. As for the Scythe changes, however, it is receiving a plus 15 Slash accuracy, which is about a 0.2% DPS increase for low defense bosses, which makes almost no difference in places like Tob. But then if you go to high defense monsters like General Garage Door, it's a 7% increase in damage. So around the Duke, depending on your BGS, you're going to get a decent increase in DPS regardless, if you care that much about it. They've also made changes, so the charges are now cheaper, so it's one vial of blood and 200 blood runes for 100 charges. Um, that's a 100 blood rune discount, which I not sure if that was really something people were too concerned about, but it's a it's a dub regardless. Anything to make the Scythe cheaper makes it more appealing for people to use because that was a major drawback. Additionally, one more buff to the Scythe, which is my favorite part of this update, as well as one of my favorite mechanics in the game, which is something that the Arclight and Crystal Armor have in common with this, is that you will only consume a Scythe charge now if you physically hit your target. So it has to be a damaging hit. If you do damage, it'll use a charge. If you hit a zero, it won't use a charge. Making the Scythe just that much better to use, that much less of a pain in the ass and people are going to be using the scythe hopefully quite a bit more in certain content because it's just going to be less of a pain in the ass on the bank the mind the soul and the fang isn't there to carry you out of the dirt anymore so pretty decent buff to the scythe the fang nerf is honestly not that big of a deal it's just a slash nerf i'm of the opinion that this will change almost nothing in the game and i'm right with that especially when valamore comes out so this isn't going to really change too much the, the fang nerf i will be honest with you um you might feel like you're putting a bit more effort into some of your kills on Vardavis or Duke, but outside of that, 
business as usual guys, the Scythe is better. Tomorrow there will be a Jagex launcher update, which means if you are using the Jagex launcher, which you should be by the way, because it's the best way to secure your account if you get hacked in this day and age and you're not using the Jagex launcher, I have zero sympathy for you, you deserve it. There was a data leak, you need to know about this stuff. Get the Jagex launcher or get fucking hacked. Basically, it's gonna need you to just log back in. So make sure you have your password handy. No big deal on that front. Winter Summer is this weekend. I want to live stream um, like reacting and kind of just talking about this and enjoying this with my community here on YouTube. But I think I won't be available. I've got to go help my parents out during this time. So if I can, I, I will try to be there. But it's, it's not looking likely at the moment, unfortunately. I do apologize for that. But if I'm live, come by, say hi, call me a dickhead and fuck off, whatever you want to do. Otherwise, they're doing a bunch of giveaways. You can go to their Twitter page and get yourself a plushie if you're lucky or a, a whatever the fuck that is and some more shit to waste space in your fucking room. Uh, other changes updated the Global League high scores, which no one cares about. Sacred and Infernal Eel harvesting loot drops are now tracked on the loot tracker, which no one cares about. Listening to the cow fight layers agility shortcut will now include information about how long the Queen's chamber has been empty. All right, that's handy. Basically, nothing important in other changes, and the PvP rotor LMS is no longer on Oswald's, but Bounty Hunter is. That is all this week for Old School RuneScape, but we do have an economy update, which is actually really important this week because there is a lot of big changes and a lot of money to be thrown around at you guys, so make sure you stay tuned for the Grand Exchange update, which will be here in just five seconds. RuneScape 3 did not receive any nerfs or buffs this week because the entire game is just one fucking nerf on the internet. In other words, RuneScape 3 is fucking dog shit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Grand Exchange update for this week in Rune News. My name is Wade Green, and this week we got the Odium Ward on the rise. Now, this goes for also the, the Obsidian Shield and the Malediction Ward. What you have to remember is this was purely a polled question that has done this, okay? This is a polled question to move the Valamor Crystal Shard from the Guardian Boots to the Shields, which hasn't even, like, been polled properly yet. The poll's still open. There's no pass vote. And what you got to remember is the boot option is legitimately better because we shields are dead content in this game. There's no way you're replacing your shield with a defender or something that doesn't increase strength bonus. So, one, investing in this is the dumbest shit ever. Two... That, that's it, actually. That's it. This is rising in price because dickheads are legitimately trying to farm items just because they're mentioned in a poll. Now, the sooner this community straightens up and smartens their shit, get your act together and stop fucking just reading a poll or a news post and going, Look, I've got to buy that. It's got to be good money. This is like 700k you're fucking fighting over, okay? It's fucking chump change. Stop fucking around with the polls. Just play the fucking game. This is ridiculous that a poll that hasn't even passed yet hasn't even finished polling, it is spiking shields like this. It's ridiculous. Now the biggest loss for this week is the Twisted Relic Hunter Tier 3 armor set, and this is purely a reminder to not invest your lead points in this set because it's dropping. If you're looking at money for this, it's a terrible time to buy. It's a terrible time to spend your points. It's gonna keep dropping. Never invest in this if you're looking for money. Terrible idea. And it looks like shit. Now with this week's updates, it's only fair that we look at the Cypher Vitua and the way that it is uh, trending. So far it's holding pretty steadily at 900 mil. We're estimating that it might hold for a little longer. It may drop down to the 700, 800 mark when the hype dies off. This is purely hard to speculate at the moment because of the way this update is going and the way that future updates may be determined based on content that's coming out as well. So if you have a Cypher, I recommend holding onto it. If you're looking to sell, it's not a bad time to sell. You're not going to lose money, but I probably wouldn't buy unless you have the extra spare cash because we don't know which way the sites are going to go yet. You're probably better off going to top and pulling one yourself if I'm honest. And finally, the mole slippers. What did I tell you guys? Like I said, Rune News is back. We're in full fucking swing. Leagues is over and the price is fucking up. I told you, it is going up and this is just the beginning. Mole slippers to the motherfucking moon. To Xanarus, if you will, because I found out Xanarus is the moon this week. Back to the point. Mole slippers, this is the perfect time to invest. 534.7k a pair. Now, this is nothing because they're going to be worth 30 mil by the end of next year. Mark my words or unsubscribe. So now's your time to buy because if you're here, well, I'm up here at the top, okay? If you invest in mole slippers here and you tell your friends to invest after you, the mole slippers go up in value, they buy, yours are worth more, mine are obviously worth more because I'm at the top of the, the uh, not, let's not call it a pyramid, let's call it a, a triangle, okay? Because I'm at the top, 
I will obviously make the most money and, and benefit the most, but everyone below, if you, the earlier you buy in, the more money you make. Hold them, hold them hard. They're worth three mil at one point. We can make them 30 mil, no worries. So mole slippers, buy a good pair today, become a rich cunt tomorrow. My name is Wade Green, and I got a big cock. Our first Iron Man moment for the week goes to the one, the only, non-Iron Man, but Rebel Montana himself, the Cheese Cake Factory connoisseur. We have the second skeletal visage at 426, just after he died and took a shot. He likes to take shots when he dies. You can tell he must have been drunk during this screenshot because of how fucking big it is, and I'm not resizing that shit. So learn to take a fucking screenshot, but GZ, well, yeah, congratulations on the luck, Rebel Montana. Next, we have Hera Beavis, the absolute weapon pulling the blood torva here from the Leviathan, and yes, he also got coal for being a naughty boy. I know it's in the chat box somewhere down there. Jeezy on the blood torva, you deserve it. It's nice to see people earning it legitimately without their cheat clients, and uh, I would say overextended plugins, but there's a lot of tile markers, doesn't matter. Blood Torva is Blood Torva. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for this week in Rune News. Absolutely no one of importance receiving any sort of decent drop this week, especially not the Ring of the God that they're absolutely hunting for. Fucking sit, Shangers. My name is Ryan Ryan, and uh, I'll be back next week with more juicy content. Thank you for watching, and you're watching Rune News.